What's so funny is I'll be like, oh my gosh, I love these tropes. And then I'll read those tropes and be like, eh. Um, there was a lot of hype. So maybe I had my expectations too high. I'm not gonna finish this story if I'm not interested in the romance. Hi guys. So first of all, you caught me kind of in a reading slump, but also I'm reading five books at the same time. So I'm not sure what that means. I'm just waiting to find a book that makes me feel something so deep. But I fear that I may have found those previously and may never find one again. I thought that we'd update each other. I haven't really done a reading wrap up. I've done like a yearly wrap up, but I want to tell you guys what I've been reading lately, what my thoughts are, what I think are overrated, underrated, what my genres are, what kind of tropes I'm into, webtoon, middle grade, Harry Potter, book talk, all the things. <sighs> So yeah, as many of you know, I read A Court of Thorns and Roses. <laughs> I don't know what to say because obviously I did a video on it. So you can watch that if you really want to know. But my main thing is I just wasn't all that interested in it. So I don't understand how these people who have never read books their entire lives are all of a sudden binging this series. Like they're just so invested. They love it so much. The romance is peak. They think Rasand is the best thing to ever be born. I was so underwhelmed and it was repetitive. I I don't understand because for me to write books that entice non-readers is a hard job. The fact that Sarah J Maas did it with something that had its good moments but also was so niche. I feel like it was pretty niche. I read Akatar, then I read A Court of Mist and Fury, and I'm bored, so I'm done. I thought the first one was pretty good. I thought it wasn't bad. There were some slower parts, but I honestly enjoyed it. It had some strong writing. It created a good, strong heroine, and the romance was honestly pretty swoon-worthy. And then we have the second book, which just rewrites the first book to me. It has a very predictable romance that didn't hold tension for me. I was expecting tension and groveling, and you could argue that there was. I, explain to me why I didn't feel those butterflies. Someone explain to me why Rasand put me in a room with him. I love him. Yes, of course, everyone loves him. But tell me why when I was reading this, I just didn't feel the magic. I don't believe they actually love each other. Like, I'm sorry. That's exactly how I feel. I don't know if there just wasn't enough base there. And I know that they had base. They were friends. They were enemies. And maybe it was because the first book, when she felt all that tension, she saw him as someone else. And then he became his true self and she fell in love with him but i just don't know i was expecting like a stefan damon thing is not the same at all i love vampire diaries but damon never changed who he was Rasand, i feel like was a completely different villain he wasn't even a villain they switched to the villain was keep Rasand as the villain i want him to be the villain anyways i just don't know that i can trust book talk and i know i've said this before but i'm serious contemporary books <laughs> you guys <laughs> I've been reading a lot of fantasy, a lot of Regency. I've been delving into these different genres, but one that I was lacking was contemporary. I decided to pick up a contemporary book that I've heard a lot of good things about. Better than the movies. Okay, I didn't hate it. I, I didn't completely hate it. This is about a hopeless romantic teenager. You know, she has this like love-hate relationship with her neighbor. She has a crush on this boy who comes back for after moving away and she like wants to impress him. Her neighbor boy kind of helps her impress this guy. And what happens? You guessed it. The two have feelings for each other, her and her neighbor, her rival, and it's cute. Wes Bennett is incredible. I love him as a character. I love him. Liz, Liz and I can never be friends. She is a liar, blah, blah, blah. Liz, why are you lying? And it's one thing to lie, it's another to not have any consequences. She tells people she was lying and guess what? Oh, Liz, I totally get it. No! You can't just lie and get let off. And that bothered me because she was just lying after lying and it made me cringe and I wanted to die. That is such a contemporary trope, the lying trope, that I cannot stand. Please, for the love, why are we fake dating? Why are we lying? Why are you lying about where you work? Because you're embarrassed about the dress you wore. Just own up to it or don't wear the dang dress. Why are we doing this? Also, I do have a metaphobia, so I didn't appreciate the part where she gets thrown up on, made me cringe. I really like Wes, do not like Liz. I saw a comment somewhere that was like, um, love it, bet they'll break up in college. A hundred percent they would. And I know she's gonna write a second book and of course they're not gonna be broken up. Trouble in paradise or something. No, seriously, I absolutely agree. I think Liz is very, she's a problematic character for sure. Their kiss in the car was very cute. I liked a lot of parts. Wes was just a very charismatic, loving golden retriever and I love him. He's a tease. He's fun, he's caring, and he's romantic. As far as young adult contemporary goes, checks off all the boxes. Family lessons and growth. 
clashing with best friends and learning to forgive, making college plans, prom, <laughs> navigating crushes and first loves. So it's a very reliable, it's a very safe read, but it's nothing new, if that makes sense. If you are into that, it delivers. It promises what it, what it stands for. But I also enjoyed that the intimacy was clean. I always love a good clean romance. I don't think I'll read another one by her. I don't know why I inwardly cringe so bad when any book mentions pop culture, song names, movies, books. When Liz gets in the car and she's like, an old song from Selena Gomez came on. It, it, I just, I don't like it. Because I read to get away from that. I just don't, you don't need to mention it. It doesn't need to be mentioned. Talk about something else. So that's, that's really weird because it's a very fine line because I'm fine if they're like, oh, 1950s Cadillac, like whatever, it's a car. But as soon as it's about celebrities or movies, she kept talking about movies and books. <clears throat> no. Oh yeah, The Cruel Prince. You guys, I need to make a whole A video on my issues with The Cruel Prince. I can't even finish that series. I literally bought The Stolen Heir, which is about later after The Cruel Prince. Can't even read it yet because I haven't finished The Cruel Prince because it's that hard for me. But The Cruel Prince is fairies and stuff. And then of course, our main girl, Jude. I can't stand her. She bugs the crap out of me. Her and her sister, Vivian, go to, <laughs> where did they go? TJ Maxx? JCPenney. They go to JCPenney and she's like, Vivian and I walked into JCPenney. Girl, I don't care. Don't drop name brands. Cringe. I don't know why. Someone explain it. There has to be a name for it. Like, I can't be the only one that feels this way. You guys, I read Purple Hearts because I watched the movie and I fell in love because that was great. Marriage and Convenience hit so hard when done right. And this one was done right. We have someone who's suffering with diabetes and I loved that he like took care of her and she took care of him when he like broke his leg. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Yeah, I was squealing. It was like the most watched movie on Netflix of 2022 or something, which I thought was insane. It's just, it's cute. I wish there was a second one so bad. I wish there was a second book. I wish there was a second movie. The only thing, the movie was better. I will say there are some really good things that were done in the book. Like I'll look at my notes. Now it was dual perspective. So I really loved seeing their inner struggles, everything. Cassie and Luke are just adorable, but Cassie did have a boyfriend on the band. That was probably the worst mistake of the author because not only is Cassie married and dating someone on her band, but Cassie is constantly like playing them both. And I hated that so much because she was sleeping with one, she was sleeping with the other, it was crazy. Girl, why? And I don't appreciate a lot of profanity. And so there was a lot of F words, way too much in my opinion. That one is also very much contemporary. She's a grunge girl. She mentions songs constantly, but it wasn't as cringy because it was more like classic songs and things like that. It follows the movie pretty well. You know, he needs money. Kind of stops mentioning her diabetes. I wish there was more moments when Luke could like take care of her or navigate her diabetes with her. That would have been adorable. And I'm pretty sure she had type two in the books and it was type one in the movies. She does tour a lot with her band in the books, but not as exclusively as in the movies. One thing that I loved so much that they did in the book was before they got married, oh my gosh, her childhood best friend. He's just so cute. He was like, okay, you guys, you're getting married. Um, so I need you guys to look at each other for two straight minutes and just try to appreciate one another. So Luke and Cassie just sit in the car annoyed because they don't want to freaking do this, but they just stare at each other, say nothing, just look. And it was adorable. Luke was like, oh, she has a really nice lips. And Cassie's like, oh, he has a really soft features. And it was just really sweet because they weren't touching or anything, but they had like an intimate moment. It was adorable. Um, it did end differently. In the movie, he gets sent off to go to serve time and she's just gonna tour with her band and like, I love you, bye, let's stay married, let's figure this out. In the book, they don't even go to trial yet. They're scheduled to go on trial. They were caught, they've decided to divorce, but then she comes to his party in his, in his brother's backyard. The brother that he has a rough relationship with that is healing, he has a little party in their backyard and to take pictures because he received his purple heart. It's like before he goes to trial, Cassie comes, surprises him, and it's adorable. He's like, okay, I'm gonna run inside. She's there, he's like, oh my gosh, 
she's basically like, I love you. Let's fight this trial thing because this isn't a marriage of convenience anymore. Like I have fallen in love with you and I think we can fight this and I think we can win. Basically, he's like, okay, you go on tour. I'm gonna go to trial. I wish there was more. I just needed more because there could be a whole second movie of them doing long distance. I don't know, there could be more. It was good, but I think the movie did do a lot of things better. Okay, so I'm right in the middle of reading A Kiss of Deception. I read the first and second. I need to read the third. If you love taverns, stone walls, castle, palaces, runaway princesses, this book is literally for you. It is pretty good. The only issue, there's a couple things that I, I guess I'm confused on. One of them being, I don't know who I side with on the romance. When there's love triangles, authors are you typically pretty good at making you root for one. Unfortunately, sometimes I root for the wrong one and then it's painful. The summer I turned pretty. I'm looking at you. I have never been so conflicted because I like them both. I'm pretty sure I know who she's gonna end up with, with the assassin. She's got to, I'm pretty sure. These books are slow. Like, they're slow moving. The second book, it was pretty long, but I feel like not a ton happened. So I feel like there is a lot of description. There's a lot of character development. And I actually love that she bur slowly burns the story, slowly builds up the relationships. And it's pretty intense. I just love medieval type stuff and so, but I'm not so obsessed with it that I like needed to pick up the third one immediately. So if that says anything, I think I've realized I'm just extremely picky with romances, period. That's it. If you love Studio Ghibli, <laughs> this one's for you. Howl's Moving Castle. Oh my gosh, that movie's so good. I had to read the book. It's actually like a children's book. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a children's because it wasn't like I could just speed read through it. I mean, there's magic, there's world building, and I don't think it could, like an elementary kid could grasp all of it. It had some very similar things to the movie, like Hal was covered in slime, green slime at one point, so if he would like clean the house and he was really bothered, they like, thought. Now what it wasn't, it wasn't as romantic as I was hoping it would be. You could tell that they loved each other, that they cared for each other, but it was pretty much like, I would almost say kind of sibling-y because they like really were bothered by each other, they fought, but they cared about each other's safety and wanted each other to be alive and around. And then all of a sudden at the end, which was cute, he's like, will you marry me? She's like, of course I will. And that was so cute. It was so cute. But I would say roughly, roughly the movie was based off the book. So if you're wanting something romance, just watch the movie. That's definitely more romantic. But if you're wanting more magic and more world building, read the book. It was a cute, fun read. I loved getting to know the different characters. Something that I thought was interesting is the author of Howl's Moving Castle actually never thought that the, the castle that was moving would have legs. Um, she always imagined it floating. Studio Ghibli depicted it as a walking castle. I thought that was cool. I looked forward to reading it, probably because I was waiting for the rom romance to come and then it didn't, so. If you're needing a romance read, probably not. I read The Night Circus. This one was fun. This one was different. It was so much harder to read than I thought. Man, did I really have to be focusing when reading it. I loved the time period. You could smell the popcorn see the white gloves, see the tents, the stripes, the sunsets. It was a warm read. I really liked the romance. It was very subtle, very cute. And we did go back and forth in between times. So you really do have to be paying attention to dates, to names. I did read it for book club and our book club was talking about it. Majority of the time we were actually explaining what we thought happened at the end because a lot of people were like, wait, what happened to this? Did they die? It was kind of like a bittersweet read because it was a little bit haunting a little bit haunting and a little bit sad. <laughs> I just thought the writing was amazing. It was phenomenal, very unique. So if you like world building and magic, this book is for you. Another middle grade novel I've been reading is The False Prince. I read the first and second one. I don't know if you guys have heard of this one. This guy goes and finds these three boys and trains them to be the, the missing prince. That way he can basically be like, I found the prince. He gets authority. So he's trying to, have these boys compete to who would make the best prince. And it's really interesting, it's really intriguing, it's fun. What I like so much about this book is it is not super fast paced. It really focuses on the character's inner thoughts. He tricks you. You can't trust Sage, our main character. He tricks the reader. And so there were parts when I was like, oh my gosh, no way. 
No way! Read the second book. She loosely did a love triangle. I'm not sure what her intention was, but of course I was rooting for the wrong side, so I knew I had to Google it. Just Google who he was gonna end up with. This is terrible. I'm not gonna finish his story if I'm not interested in the romance. That's so bad of me! I didn't want to finish the series if he ended up with the person I didn't want him to. So, turns out he does, so I am... Um, I stopped there. I'm done. I'm not finishing it. <laughs> the romance was really good. I was really hoping she was gonna do something with the romance, but she ended up, I think, going to what she originally thought. So I don't know why she did a quick one on me. Whatever. I just, I think I just love romance with royalty, but I'm really picky about it, which is funny. That's hilarious. Currently reading this. I have read this before. I read this when it came out over a decade ago. This is my favorite series to this day. When people ask me my favorite series, I'm like the selection by Kira Cass. Is it nostalgia? Is it because it's good? Yes and yes. Am I like this is the best book ever written? I can't say that, but it's the best book to me. I just love it so much. I'm gonna do a whole video on the selection. I'm assuming all of you have read it. If you haven't, read it. But I'm also curious to know what people think when they read it as adults versus I read it when I was 12. So of course I loved it and now I love it still. No one has yet to beat Max and Screve to me. He is in a room full of fictional characters. I would go to him first. He is mine. I love him. So I've been reading that. That's been really fun. Oh, guys, this is important. I read my first webtoon published novel, Lore Olympus. I have been wanting to read this one for a long time because it is the number one webtoon. I've heard so many great things. I am not super in Greek mythology, probably why I'm struggling through the lightning thief right now. I thought I'd give it a shot. Um, there was a lot of hype. So maybe I had my expectations too high, but I felt like there really wasn't a lot of plot and the plot that there was was just sexualizing the woman. I'm not super into that. It wasn't needed. And the romance was good, but it felt flat a lot of times because there wasn't a lot of plot to make it intense or drive the tension. Like, what is the plot? Like someone explained, oh, it's just about Greek gods and goddesses having grudges against each other. Okay, that's just what I'm feeling. I wonder if any of you feel the same way with fan fiction. As you may know, I love Miraculous Ladybug. I have yet to read a Miraculous Ladybug fanfic because of these reasons. If I'm about to read a fanfic, I need it from the beginning to the end. I can't just have like a spin-off of an episode or a spin-off on, oh, Cat Noir and Ladybug go on a date. No, I need to know how they met, when they fell in love, who fell first. I have been searching to no avail fan fiction that starts from the beginning, the very beginning, and goes to the very end. I'm sure it's out there. Guys, help me out. But I promise you, I have started some that are just painful to me because my imagination can't do that, where I just fill in the blanks. Cat Noir takes my hand. Let's go on a date to the museum. Then they go to the museum. I'm just like, where's all the history? I need it. I, I guess that's my issue with fan fiction is so often is fan fiction just a quick ride. And I need a full on novel. I need several novels. That's why I read Hunger Games in Peta's point of view, the whole fan fiction, because it was beginning to the end. And I needed that, I needed it. It delivered. So um, I'm reading the one, <laughs> you know that. I started Bridgerton because I finally watched the series. Season one, I started it like a couple years ago. This was me. I started it, beep. It started playing Thank You Next orchestra version and I immediately X'd it out. There is no way I'm watching that. I stand corrected because the music is now beautiful and for some reason I just had to accept, okay, it's not Pride and Prejudice. It is not historically correct and that's fine. It's a contemporary Jane Austen. Get over it. And so I did. Season one was mid, season two slapped. It was so good. Queen Charlotte was pretty okay too. Season three so far, it's okay. Not as good as season two. Season two was <laughs> so good. Canthony, forever. I love you forever. I will never ever forget you. So yeah, I'm reading this one right now. I'm not used to reading Regency romances that have like the thoughts of a man that aren't always proper. Damn, okay. You want to push Daphne up against a wall. Okay, I get it. I've heard it's not erotica, which is good because I don't like smut. So we'll see how smutty it is. Of course, I'm on the Half-Blood Prince. This one is crazy because this one really went for plot B. The whole series has been like plot A or each story's had their own plot. This one kind of stepped away and kind of just developed the relationships, kind of just developed 
Dumbledore and Harry looking into Tom Riddle's backstory, which is good and I think a lot of people love that. My husband, this is his favorite one because of that. This has taken me probably the longest to read because I think it has been hard to like super, super get into just because I'm not in the middle of a huge plot point. It's just this mystery discovering. And that's what Harry Potter is and I love it and I love the characters and he's liking Ginny. It's way better done here than in the freaking movies. Yeah, I think I'm glad that she ended the series at the seventh because this book, you can see that she decided to take a different route and develop the characters before she finished the plot. And I think that was a really smart move. Ugh. It's so good. I am reading Percy Jackson right now. I'm almost done with The Lightning Thief. I've never read it before. I will say this now. Do not hate me. I do not think it was meant to be read by adults first. First time run through by adults. If I had read it in middle school, elementary, oh, I would have died. I, I would have loved it. I would have loved the romance and the writing is so fun. I still think, you know, when Percy explains things, he's just so fun and so young and I like that. I am not like, oh my gosh, I need to know what happens next because it's just a child's adventure, which is fun, but I'm not a child and maybe that's why. Oh. Don't hate me. What's so funny is that I'll be like, oh my gosh, I love these tropes. And then I'll read those tropes and be like, eh, that wasn't it. <laughs> I hate being a picky reader. I hate it. It's so rough. Tell me what you're all reading. What should I be reading? Come on, tell me, tell me everything. Thanks for being my buddies and helping me feel like I'm talking to someone about all my book stuff and bookish things. So I feel that satisfaction. Happy reading.